form. And with this, she returned to her original menstrual cycles. The wart and the sciatica which had developed at the same time too disappeared. In the middle of this, she developed an ovarian cyst, but I wanted to check out. Frankly, I wanted to see what happens. Even the ovarian cyst disappeared with the same prescription. So here I am today to, to speak about what has helped me in my clinic, and that is using the concomitants present in a case. I'm pre presenting predominantly menstrual disorders today. Now we all know that abnormalities of menstruation are one of the most common reasons women seek medical care. These have varied expressions. It could be either too much bleeding, too little bleeding. It could be bloating, it could be irritability, crying, breast tenderness, abdominal pain. There are different variations of these. And while many people shrug it off as, oh, you have to live with it. But homeopathy can help. So why not help someone lead a day-to-day -day normal physiological activity and normal life? Social environment, socio-economic conditions, side effects of medicines or surgical procedures play a significant role in the evolution of menstrual disorders in itself. And this is a very common thing. Every woman at some point or the other for some religious function, some outing would have popped in at least one of the OCPs to postpone. And you never know who is going to be get, get affected with that and how. So, so side effects of medicines play a very, very important role on this. So basically when I did this study, what was I trying to do? I wanted to see first and foremost what can we do? What is the scope and limitations of homeopathy in treating benign menstrual disorders? Let's start with the benign. I wanted to see where we stand. Also, I wanted to emphasize the value of a detailed history, especially beyond pathology, to extract the concomitants and to determine the value of a holistic approach. Now the scope, coming to scope, today we all lead a stressful lifestyle. Stress can lead to a lot of cyclical disability. It tips the balance of the hormones. Now, this is something we as homeopaths, we are very familiar, but I want to quote something from an allopathic textbook. That is Principles of Gynecology by Jeff. Or encourage physical or mental ill health. The psyche influences the development of organic disease in remote parts of the body. Illness begets anxiety, and this in turn begets illness. We have learned it, but I want to emphasize that this has already been mentioned which every MD, uh, uh, PhD or MD gynecology is studying this textbook. Coming back to homeopathy, menstrual disturbances are essentially sore. Dr. Hanneman has mentioned this in the chronic diseases. Just to read out, we are all familiar with the theory part of chronic diseases, but I just want to bridge the gap of then and now. He has stated, the menses are slow in setting in after the year and later. This is nothing but primary amenorrhea, that's today's terminology. Or after appearing one or more times, they cease for several months and for years. Secondary amenorrhea, again, today's terminology. So the description is there then. Today, we have different names given to it. The menses do not keep their regular periods. They either come several days too early, sometimes every three weeks or every even every fortnight, every menorrhea. The menses flow only one day, only a few hours, or imperceptibly small quantities. This is hypomenorrhea. Homeopathy has the tools with it. It has the presence of concomitants, which is very easily available in menstrual complaints. Any repertory, any repertory with endless fine differentiations of concomitants, of color of the bleed, time of uh, bleeding. So any repertory is your tool. Some of the limitations which we face during the study and we do face it even now is sometimes due to socioeconomic reasons, investigations are not made mandatory. Sometimes there's a difficulty in documenting the investigations. Now my main
purpose here is to emphasize the value of concomitants in treating menstrual disorders. Now, I put down this quote. The detailed history would be that of, of the past medical history, family history, personal history, and scrupulous attention to these will save us trouble in the saves time, trouble, investigations, and mistakes. But most importantly, again, this is an allopathic textbook. The patient appreciates the opportunity to tell her story and among irrelevances, invariably gives the vital clues. Now, to us homeopaths, these vital clues are the concomitants and the modalities. So why, why this even cry about concomitants? These, we all know, are key individualizing factors. Now, Dr. H.J. Roberts himself has summarized that it is the soda which is the fundamental cause which produces the functional disturbance due to hypersensitiveness, both in the physical and the mental plane. It is the soric element which gives the valuable concomitants and furnishes the modalities and sensations which help in individualization. Now, it is always seen. Now, the more the concomitants, the better off you are, you know that you're going to get good results. Because the more the concomitants, the soric patient is the one who suffers the most. They are the one who will go from doctor to doctor. Because they need, everyone is shunning them. Everyone says that, you don't live with this. You take some primrose oil, you'll, you'll get better. You must learn, you must control your anger. But they can't. They cannot do it. They are suffering because of the hypersensitivity. And you know that we have the need to help them. The next slide, please. The next slide. Having spoken about the concomitants, now what is the relationship that we have with pathology? We cannot deny pathology. First and foremost, you must realize one thing, that when a person comes to the clinic in the first place, they come with at least two bags of reports. That's definitely going to be there. We have to be, we have to be wise enough to use the reports and, and maintain them to show the evidence, but we have to sift through them to get to what we need from it. Pathological studies fully supplement the clinical studies. They help us with diagnosis and the prognosis of where we stand, first and foremost, how much we can do. The symptom totality is the superstructure and pathology the foundation. Now, whenever there is any stress, whenever there is anything to create an illness, something has to take place. It may not show in your first-hand report, but some, at least a small biochemical change or fluid change has to take place to trigger the symptoms evolving. And hence we say that that small minute change, which is not yet so much to be put on paper, but it is sufficient to create some symptomatology. Now that is your foundation and the symptomatology that progresses from it is the superstructure. They are genuinely the two sides of the coin. We cannot take this or that. We have to supplement both. A holistic approach to treating menstrual disorders. Now, Dr. Hanneman and Dr. Poppetweig have spoken strongly about the lifestyles as predisposing influences. Luxurious living, sedentary or unhealthy occupations, overwork, overstudy, inordinate sexual indulgence, climate, environmental influences. What is lacking in today's day? All of this is present in today's day. Deficiencies. Deficiencies are abundant yes, today. They have to be supplemented in diet, and I have not mentioned one thing. They have to be supplemented through sunlight today. There is a huge deficiency of vitamin D. None of us want to go out in the sun. None of us go out to hang clothes and dry our clothes in the sun. None of us want to walk to bus stands. So we're all, if it's left unintended, according to the homeopathic viewpoint, Today we are seeing how much of PCOV and fibroids we are seeing. This is partly due to their lifestyles. This is partly due to the way they have been treated also. Just one more Now, concomitant chart has shown that there is a wide distribution of concomitants. It is a good opportunity to individualize and reach the root level of myosin. As I said in the beginning, patients come with, with bags of reports. You have to sift out from that bag and put on what very well prevented through homeopathy. So in conclusion, today
Today is an era of multitasking. Every woman is multitasking. It is an era of and when I spoke about the lifestyles, today most women decide to get married when they are 28 and 30. Either way, reproductive capacity comes down after 30. So then all goes into assisted conceptions. So we, we have to emphasize lifestyle also. Frustration. Frustration has led them, frustration and I will again emphasize social pressure has led them to hasty On the most, one of the most prominent problems we see in women. She has illustrated this form of homeopathy and her mode of treatment by giving importance to her competence and modalities in treating her cases and shown successful results. Her presentation today was very informative and helpful in our practice. Thank you, Lord's Doctor. I request Dr. Brito Wilbur Das, Vice President of ISM, to come forward. Thank <laughs> you.